let's be honest. When it comes to the horror genre in the last 10 years, you have to admit that the indie division is literally the savior of the situation. It's pretty much what gives the word horror in gaming an actual meaning. I honestly don't remember being terrified while playing games like Resident Evil, Dying Light, or even Silent Hill because even though they're pretty fun and interactive, they simply don't feel like they're meant to actually scare us or make us realize what fear really means. However, on the other side, indie horror games are the complete opposite when it comes to their concepts and mechanics. They don't care about giving you a weapon to defend yourself and take action. They don't care if you can see the enemy or not. They don't care if you lose your mind while solving a puzzle that makes no sense. They simply love seeing you struggle, confused, and devastated. But let's be clear here. Not all indie horror games are the same, and to be specific, not all of them are equally good or at the same level of quality. That's why I'm completely positive that me and you can agree that there are a few that basically stand out from the hundreds of other titles that were released over the years. And that's exactly the point of this video. I want to talk about the best and most memorable indie horror titles of the last decade, so anyone new to the field can know what the real hardcore games are that they need to jump on. If you're an old follower of this channel, then you'll probably recognize most of these games, and you definitely know that Lucas has talked about most of them before. However, I personally disagree with some of his rankings and positions. So without any more chit chat, let's just dive in. If you're searching for an unusual game that can break your common style of horror game and provide you with a freaking creepy experience without even having to move or investigate the environment, then I'm on observation duty is exactly what you're searching for. The game revolves around surveillance cameras where you play as an employee of a government agency responsible for identifying and reporting supernatural anomalies. Although the game lacks a comprehensive plot, it doesn't hinder the overall enjoyment. The core gameplay revolves around monitoring various security cameras in haunted locations such as schools, offices, and train stations. Your task is to detect any changes or anomalies in the camera feeds, which can range from objects appearing or disappearing, lights behaving strangely, or the presence of malevolent spirits. The challenge lies in memorizing the normal appearance of each room and quickly spotting any differences. But if you think that it's as simple as it sounds, then I'm sorry to tell you that you're completely delusional because this is actually one of those games that can get to your mind by just making you afraid of what's not appearing and not just of what's visible. The game successfully creates tension and excitement as the anomalies increase in number, forcing you to race against time to identify and report them. Failure to handle the supernatural invasion results in a game over making the stakes feel high. On top of that, the logic of requiring paperwork to resolve anomalies may be a bit puzzling and arbitrary. Besides that, the black and white camera feeds add to the spooky atmosphere, while the variety of anomalies keeps you waiting with your hand on your heart. But the tricky part is that some differences are actually more challenging to spot than others, adding an element of difficulty and enhancing the sense of feeling smart when you successfully identify them. So basically, this game is a challenge on multiple levels, not just for your ability to use fear, but also for your ability to focus and react quickly because it requires a keen eye for detail and persistence to succeed. However, the fair part is that the initial deaths serve as a learning experience, allowing you to memorize room layouts and become more efficient at identifying anomalies. So if you enjoy a unique twist on horror and have a sharp eye for detail, this game should definitely be on your wish list.
the things that I and Lucas agree on completely is that you can't make a list of the best indie horror games of all time without mentioning this game. It simply looks too beautiful to be ignored. Hellseed is an immersive first-person horror game that delves deep into the macabre and eerie world of Italian horror cinema. With its realistic graphics, powered by S2 Engine HD, the game successfully creates a photorealistic environment that fully immerses players in the role of a detective investigating a mysterious disappearance. The atmosphere pays homage to classic Italian horror cinematography, evoking a sense of fear throughout the experience. Jump scares and references to Italian culture also add an extra layer of authenticity to the game's surroundings, keeping players on edge and eager to uncover the secrets lurking within the hauntingly beautiful setting. One of Hellseed's strongest aspects is its intriguing story, which is set in the 1980s. Taking on the role of the detective protagonist, you gradually unravel the mysteries surrounding the doctor's house and its enigmatic inhabitants. The narrative unfolds organically, allowing you to piece together the puzzle through thorough investigation and exploration of each side of the dark house. The inclusion of puzzles and investigations adds depth and variety to the gameplay. With a well-structured inventory system, players can collect and examine various objects, utilizing them to solve even the more complex brain teasers and uncover hidden secrets. This aspect of the game encourages critical thinking and observation, enhancing the overall immersion and sense of accomplishment. A notable feature of Hellsea to the introduction of a chasing gameplay mechanic. At a certain point in the game, a dark presence begins pursuing the player, introducing a thrilling element of danger and urgency. This dynamic creates tense and heart-pounding moments as players must think quickly, find hiding spots, and make clever use of the environment to escape their relentless pursuer. I also need to mention that the story takes place in two different places. Besides the doctor's house, you will also find yourself in a frightening clinic where terrible things happened and eerie signs were everywhere. With that being said, I can't just talk about the good sides of the experience and ignore the downsides. While Hellseed excels in many areas, there are a few minor areas where it could be improved. Although the game captures the essence of Italian horror cinema, some players may find the frequent jump scares a bit excessive and predictable. Furthermore, a wider range of puzzles and investigative challenges could further enhance the gameplay's variety and complexity. However, that's definitely not enough to avoid it and call it a failed project. The realistic graphics, intriguing storyline, engaging puzzles, and intense chase sequences make for an enthralling gameplay experience that can make you forget the minor flaws. So if you're a fan of classic horror and enjoy the thrill of being pursued by a relentless entity, Hellseed is definitely worth venturing into. Any real horror fan knows that this list cannot be complete without some Asian vibes, and I don't think any Asian indie horror game can surpass Devotion's unique climate. It's an extraordinary game that seamlessly blends elements of psychological horror, emotional storytelling, and intricate puzzles to create a captivating narrative experience. This indie masterpiece takes players on a haunting journey that explores the depths of devotion, sacrifice, and the power of love. The story is set in 1980s Taiwan and revolves around a troubled family and their pursuit of redemption. You will explore the life of a writer named Du Feng Yu, who resides in an apartment with his wife, Li Fang, and their daughter, Mei Xin. As you navigate the meticulously designed environment, you uncover a series of enigmatic events that gradually reveal the family's dark secrets. 
Devotion masterfully employs intense exploration and eerie sound design to create an atmosphere dripping with tension and mystery. As the narrative unfolds, you witness Du Feng Yu's increasing obsession with his career and the emotional strain it places on his family. Through a series of flashbacks and haunting encounters, you will discover the tragic consequences of Du Feng Yu's pursuit of success, leading to the gradual deterioration of the family's connection and the loss of his daughter. Devotion delves deep into themes of love, sacrifice, and redemption. The game forces players to confront the consequences of their actions, exploring the boundaries of devotion and the lengths one would go to for their loved ones. It emphasizes the importance of cherishing and nurturing relationships, reminding players of the fragility of familial bonds. The game also touches on themes of guilt and forgiveness. Du Feng Yu's journey becomes an introspective exploration of his past mistakes and the opportunity for redemption. Players are faced with moral dilemmas and are challenged to confront their own flaws reflecting on the power of forgiveness and the possibility of personal growth. In conclusion, Devotion is a truly remarkable game that leaves an indelible mark on players long after they have put down their controllers. It reminds us of the profound impact our actions can have on our loved ones and the power of forgiveness to heal deep wounds. And by the way, the reason why I'm repeating words like forgiveness and redemption so many times is because the game is literally about these sentiments more than anything else. So I'm really convinced that the Taiwanese studio Red Candle Games has created a masterpiece that pushes the boundaries of storytelling and gaming and stands as a testament to the power of interactive narratives to evoke emotions and provoke introspection. I definitely can't recommend this one enough. This is one of those titles that came out of nowhere and no one even knew who its developer was, but then boom, we have one of the chilliest indie horror projects of the last decade. From the Darkness is an immersive escape room game that plunges players into a nerve wracking experience within the confines of a modest apartment. As they navigate the open map spanning approximately 600 square feet, players must seek out clues and objects in a quest to find their way out. The non-linear nature adds an element of suspense, requiring you to collect items while anticipating chilling events that will reveal the path forward. You will explore the captivating elements of From the Darkness in so many ways, delving into its effective use of phobias, the eerie encounters along a foreboding hallway, the significance of fear-inducing objects, and the haunting presence of the game's main adversary. Despite its seemingly confined setting, it manages to magnify the horror as players delve deeper into the game. Returning to a previously explored room, they may be greeted with dimmed lights, rearranged objects, or the unnerving sight of a freaking giant figure hastily retreating into a hiding spot. This is when things begin to get insanely serious, and your pants might start getting wet at any second because you're obviously not alone in the freaking place. The constant reshuffle of the proverbial deck also prevents you from adapting fully to your surroundings, rendering the familiar space no less terrifying. With each encounter, the suspense builds, leaving you on edge as you cautiously explore the ever-evolving apartment. From the Darkness masterfully exploits common phobias, notably nyctophobia, which is the fear of darkness, and claustrophobia, the fear of confined spaces, to keep players in a constant state of alertness and dread. The dark and atmospheric environment amplifies the fear of the unknown, compelling players to cautiously maneuver through the flat. Moreover, the short hallway that connects the rooms serves as a nerve center for most scares and unnatural events. The recurring pattern of encountering monstrous figures in the hallway fosters a sense of caution and trepidation, ensuring that players remain wary of progressing. The game's design purposefully prompts you to repeatedly traverse the hallway, consistently subjecting you to frightful encounters that sustain your paranoia. Within the sparsely furnished rooms of the house, the game strategically places frightening objects to heighten the sense of terror. These objects, which initially startled players upon entering each room, later become instruments of fear, 
forcing players to interact with them in order to progress. Each object represents a different phobia, ensuring that players face at least one fear-inducing element tailored to their individual experience. This calculated use of objects taps into the psychological realm, exploiting deeply rooted fears and effectively sustaining the game's unsettling atmosphere. The most memorable object is definitely none other than the frightening doll that literally follows your movements with its scary eyes, so you can always remain uncomfortable and on high alert because it might jump on you at any moment. Even though many people might argue that the first half of the experience is way scarier than the second one, I still consider From the Darkness overall to be one of the most effective and surprising spooky indie horror games of the last decade because it simply focuses on the most important element, which is the atmosphere. stories people tell about the Finch family. Most of them end strangely. Some of them don't even seem possible. And they can't all be true, obviously. But the Finch family stories I believe, the ones that seem real to me, those are always the ones where somebody dies at the end. I'm not sure if the story I'm about to tell you is true or not. But I know it's something nobody's heard before. This one is mine. This game is probably the most unique one compared to other titles on the list, because it's actually the only one that focuses more on making you sad than scared. Its psychological power comes from its emotional events instead of jump scares or ghosts. The story of what remains of Edith Finch revolves around the protagonist, Edith Finch, as she returns to her family's secluded and seemingly cursed home known as the Finch House. Edith is the last surviving member of the Finch family and seeks to uncover the truth behind the mysterious and tragic deaths that have plagued her relatives for generations. As Edith explores the house, she discovers sealed off rooms belonging to each deceased person. Each room tells the story of a different family member's final moments, presented in a series of short, interactive vignettes. These stories are varied in style and gameplay mechanics, allowing you to experience different perspectives and engage with the characters' lives. The tales Edith uncovers are filled with both beauty and tragedy. From the perspective of a young girl named Molly, Players witness her vivid imagination as she transforms into various creatures and explores a fantasy world. Another story follows Lewis, a young man who escapes the monotony of his job by daydreaming and immersing himself in a fantastical role-playing game. The stories delve into the depths of human emotions, exploring themes of loss, grief, family bonds, and the fleeting nature of life itself. Throughout the game, Edith's narration provides context and insight into the family's history, drawing players further into the lives of the Finch family members. The house itself acts as a character filled with mementos, photographs, and personal belongings that hint at the struggles and experiences of each family member. As the game progresses, Edith uncovers the tragic fates of her relatives and the mysteries surrounding the Finch family unfold. The narrative explores the weight of family legacy, the cyclical nature of life and death, and the ways in which stories shape our understanding of the past. And believe me when I tell you that this experience will make you feel sad one way or another, whether it's by discovering the lives of the dead family members or by the fact that you're basically exploring past events that you can't even change. I honestly can't find any downsides here because this game really does what it's meant to do perfectly. It's a masterpiece of storytelling and interactive exploration. It offers a deeply personal and emotionally charged narrative that invites players to reflect on their own lives and contemplate the fleeting nature of existence. Whether you're a fan of narrative-driven games or simply appreciate a well-crafted and thought-provoking experience, What Remains of Edith Finch is an absolute must-play. And if you think I'm exaggerating, then keep in mind that this title literally has a 10 out of 10 rating on Steam. The rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while. 
and then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. Unless you were living under a rock, you probably knew that this game was definitely going to be mentioned in this video. Even though I don't necessarily agree with Lucas putting it at number one in his video, I still admit that it's an experience that comes once every five years in indie horror gaming. Madison is a psychological horror game that takes inspiration from the likes of PT and other acclaimed horror titles, delivering a haunting and intense experience. With an elaborate set of puzzles, a clever use of a Polaroid camera, and a chilling atmosphere, Madison offers a deeply unsettling journey into the depths of terror. You will take on the role of Luca, a troubled guy haunted by a sinister presence that will eventually turn out to be a dead evil witch called Madison, hence the name of the game. You must navigate through a shifting and malevolent home, solving a series of increasingly complex puzzles while confronting your own disturbing family history. And trust me, when I say complex puzzles, I actually mean very, very complex. The haunting narrative and atmospheric design create an environment filled with tension and uncertainty, keeping you constantly on edge because you can't predict what the heck is following you or what might appear suddenly out of nowhere. One of the standout features of Madison is the effective use of the Polaroid camera for both puzzle solving and exploration. The camera reveals hidden messages and clues, often smeared in blood, adding a sense of discovery and anticipation. Additionally, the camera's flash becomes the only source of light in pitch black environments, intensifying the fear and uncertainty of what might be lurking in the shadows. The puzzles here start simple, but quickly evolve into intricate riddles that demand lateral thinking and careful observation. Each puzzle feels unique and rarely repeats the same formula, providing a satisfying challenge that never becomes frustrating. The game's ability to generate head-scratching moments without resorting to hair-pulling difficulty is really commendable. Nevertheless, the audio design in Madison is masterfully executed. Rusty door hinges, demonic whispers, and distorted TV news bulletins create an eerie soundscape that heightens the sense of dread. The minimal musical score punctuates jump scares effectively, leaving players constantly worried and emotionally unstable. Speaking of jump scares, Madison utilizes them in abundance. While some players may find them frequent, they are creatively executed, preventing them from becoming predictable or losing their impact. The game draws inspiration from various horror influences, resulting in a variety of scare techniques that keep players constantly startled. Now let's talk a little bit about the elements that made me believe that the game couldn't be number one. Even though Madison is amazing overall, it does suffer from occasional moments of frustrating inventory management and backtracking. The limited inventory space and the need to ferry items between locations can slow down progress and add unnecessary padding to the gameplay experience. But the good news is that the downsides are pretty much non-existent aside from what I mentioned. Madison is definitely a gripping psychological horror game that offers a compelling narrative, challenging puzzles, and insanely incredible visuals. It successfully captures the essence of the genre, providing a thrilling and unsettling playthrough from start to finish. So if you're a fan of psychological horror and enjoy unraveling dark mysteries, Madison is a game that will keep your eyes open for hours, leaving you questioning your own sanity.
don't think anyone with common sense didn't expect that this one would be number one on the list. In a previous video from months ago, Lucas ranked it second after Madison. And honestly, as much as I loved Madison, I strongly believe that he was wrong because Visage simply takes the psychological horror genre to a whole new level. It's a horror game that has captivated players with its atmospheric setting, immersive storytelling, and spine-chilling gameplay. Nevertheless, with its attention to detail, psychological depth, and terrifying encounters, it delivers an amazing gaming experience that leaves players trembling with fear and craving for more. One of the standout features of Visage is its ability to create an immersive atmosphere that lingers long after the game is turned off. The meticulously designed environments, haunting sound design, and realistic visuals work in harmony to draw players into a world of darkness and suspense. Every creaking floorboard, flickering light, and distant whisper serves to intensify the sense of dread, keeping players on the edge of their seats. To make it clear, this is not just a typical horror game. It delves into the depths of the human psyche, exploring themes of trauma, guilt, and the supernatural. It unravels a complex narrative through carefully placed clues, documents, and eerie visions, allowing players to piece together the haunting story at their own pace. The psychological depth adds layers of intrigue and mystery, ensuring that players are not only frightened, but also emotionally invested in the outcome. It also excels at delivering terrifying gameplay experiences that will have players holding their breath in fear. From unnerving encounters with malevolent entities to solving intricate puzzles that unlock the secrets of the house, every moment is a nerve-wracking challenge. The fear of the unknown is expertly utilized, keeping players in a constant state of tension and anticipation as they cautiously navigate the eerie corridors and dimly lit rooms. The game also offers significant replay value as players can uncover multiple endings and hidden secrets within the game. Each playthrough reveals new layers of the story, encouraging players to revisit the haunted house and delve deeper into the horrors that await. This replayability ensures that the game remains engaging and thrilling even after completing it once. It is also worth noting that the experience is extremely hard and can actually force you to quit before completing it, or even go through half the chapters. So I really can't accept any opinion from a horror fan who says this game is overrated or not as scary as its reputation because I don't understand how any logical person can deny that this title is basically the closest thing a game can be to PT, which is pretty much the source of inspiration for everything indie horror released in the last decade. Just like Hellseed and Madison, Infliction is also one of the most effective games that can put stress on you while you're investigating a casual looking house. The game puts you in the shoes of Gary Pout, an ordinary family man who finds himself trapped in a nightmarish loop of psychological torment within his own home. You will experience heightened tension as you confront a vengeful spirit relentlessly chasing you all over the abode. Within the eerie confines of the darkened house, you must skillfully navigate to avoid fatal encounters while unraveling the enigma surrounding the Pout family. The game incorporates engaging mechanics, such as hiding and utilizing a camera to ward off the ghost, making things more complex and full of action. So if you want an extra stressful playthrough in a messed up, dark residence, then keep this one in mind. The Blair Witch Project is a psychological horror game inspired by the iconic found footage film franchise of the same name and developed by Bloober Team, the same group that is developing the Silent Hill 2 remake. Set in 1996, the game follows the story of Ellis, a former police officer who joins the search for a missing boy named Peter Shannon in the Black Hills Forest. As Ellis ventures into the dark and foreboding woods, accompanied by his loyal canine companion Bullet the Dog, he quickly realizes that he is not alone. 
mysterious supernatural forces, along with the ever-present legend of the Blair Witch, haunt the forest, distorting reality and preying on his deepest fears. The game also contains a huge plot twist that you will discover when you reach the final stages of your search. So make sure to stay ready for any surprises or at least maintain your sanity until the end. If we're talking about the best horror games of the last decade, then we also need to talk about the multiplayer ones. Many people might mention Phasmophobia and Dead by Daylight, but I personally feel that those ones are already overpopular and well known to most of you. That's why I really believe that Pacify is the perfect choice for this video, because it's pretty much the only one that's so fun without losing its seriousness. It's a thrilling horror game that successfully combines elements of suspense, exploration, and cooperative gameplay into one product. Set in a haunted house, players take on the role of paranormal investigators tasked with uncovering the secrets within its rooms and corners. The atmospheric graphics and sound design make you feel like you're being watched and hunted from all sides and angles, immersing you in a truly spine-chilling mission. The highlight of Pacify is its clever ghost, which intelligently adapts its behavior, keeping you on edge and constantly guessing its location or if it's going to show up from behind you. With its intuitive controls and engaging multiplayer mode, Pacify really offers a satisfying blend of scares and teamwork that will leave horror enthusiasts wanting more. So if you have some loyal friends and you want to spend some quality time with them hunting a girl ghost, then Pacify is what you've been looking for. Okay guys, this is it. I gave you seven incredible horror games and three additional ones that you should definitely consider. These are the titles that I personally believe are the best of the best when it comes to indie horror gaming in the last decade. And yes, I know that some of you will mention Darkwood and Layers of Fear, I can sense it already. But even though those games are actually good and very popular, I sincerely don't think that they should be on my top 10 list. However, if you disagree with my list and think that it's missing something or contains a game that shouldn't be there, then feel free to tell about it in the comments below. Enough chit chat and hope to see you soon.